but I want to say one thing before she gets going. You know, the graphics and the announcements and all that type of thing that we have done here, aren't they so well done? I am just so amazed. Like, you know, it's not that long ago that in churches you couldn't do that quality of graphics for a million dollars. And it's just amazing that we have that talent in here. Anyway, we have here a young lady named Miss Eileen. And you might know her as Jella's mother. That's who she is. But anyway, we're going to pray for her for a second. You could pray with us and um, help her to be confident and listen to God and hear what God has for her. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as you brought Eileen up here. And your anointing is on her. She is in the place where she is supposed to be, and she's here to do what you've called her to do. She has prayed, and she has prepared. She has her heart set to do what you would have her to do. So we claim now that her eyes would see in the spirit and see exactly what you have her to say, to lead her and guide her, that she just walks freely and easily in everything that you have for her to do. Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Krista. <laughs> Praise, Faith. I think I don't need two microphones, eh? This is too much. <laughs> I need this one. So, good evening. Good evening, my brothers and my sisters. I think... Um, Everybody expecting for God to be here tonight. But I think being obedient as the daughter of God is telling me to be here in front of you tonight. So I told God last night, okay, send me. So tonight, uh, we just want to make everybody uh, relax. Take it easy. You're still young. So tonight, this is the night, and we're going to make it for the glory of God. So please bear with me. I know English is not my first language, all right, my sister? But I'm doing it for the glory of God, and God, and it is not me talking to you tonight. It is God who's sending the message, and God is just using me as the vessel of his word. So let's pray. Our Lord God and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We glorify your name. We, we just want to add praises to your name because you deserve all the praises. All the glory belongs to you. And tonight, Lord God, we just want to lift up your name because your name is great and high. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. This is not an accident. This is not a coincidence why we are here tonight. And we just want to welcome your Holy Spirit to manifest in us. We just want the Holy Spirit to move freely on this, on this place. And we speak blessing and healing to each one of us. Healing spiritually and healing physically. And tonight, we just want to lift up your name because you deserve all the praises. All the glory belongs to you. This is not about me, but this is more of you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody will say, Amen. So is there anybody, just like our Wednesday service, is there anybody wants to have her or his testimony for tonight? We need that. We need that to lift up the spirit for tonight. We need somebody to stand up in front of our congregation to see how great is our God. Because each one of us is a living testimony of the living God. We are not here tonight if God is not with us. We are here tonight because all of us was broken before. And God moved into our lives to be a living testimony of his presence. So we can have a five minutes testimony or you can have one hour so that we can proceed with the worship team again <laughs> no i'm just joking i know pastor john is listening to us tonight so so is there anybody can anybody have a testimony so that we can listen for five minutes testimony 
Rob? Okay, let's give a clap offering to Rob. I just want to say thank you for the life of our brother Rob because I think most of us doesn't know that right now he's staying with uh, Jenny and Perry. He really helps a lot for that couple to take care of Perry because Perry now is in the process of um, from the stroke, right? So Perry really needs somebody to be with him. So we thank you for Rob for being there. For helping them all the time. Rob? Well, I'm happy to be in this church. Uh, so, well, uh, Praise the Lord. Uh, God, uh, God actually helped me out quite a few times. Uh, I was a drunk. <laughs> or like I was a drunk and I was drunk and came to church and then. Uh, the Lord just kind of opened up the door, told me to come to church, kept on going to church. Um, the few times I was drunk at the church. <laughs> uh, yeah, he actually um, saved me. I had um, alcohol poison a few times. I thought I'd be dead, but according to the doctor, he was just letting me know how you can live. <laughs> so, yeah, he used to be awesome. I received, received myself to, to the Lord, to give my, like, give my heart to my, my heart to Jesus, give, like, uh, Jesus, like, um, give me another heart, and then, uh, uh, so, yeah, so, um, helping, um, helping to other people, too, like, uh, um, I kind of like uh, helping Perry and and his wife. Yeah, they like um, they like family to me. They they get like really good people. Yeah, I've been celebrating. <laughs> so I'm fine. <laughs> so you struggled a little while. You tried to stop drinking, but you kind of keep falling back. Is that what happened? Yeah. And so then you got through. Then I got through. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Uh, God actually did. Uh, I guess Jesus did. Uh, um, I guess he can talk to me, eh? He said, if I can pick myself up, because I was homeless, then I had a place to stay. It took me five days to hitchhike down this way. Like, uh, I always went to the bar, like, got drunk. Um, the I was married, I got divorced, got two daughters. I don't know how they don't, they don't see them. Daughter's one in the Benji. Uh, I was kind of trying to help her out, trying to help myself out because his parents were the same way. They were alcoholics. They were trash the house. He was the only one who got beat up, so I had to go over there and go save her. And uh, she, she came, uh, when I guess she was living at my mom's house before. Before my mom passed away, she uh, took off. She didn't came back for like five days. She came back with me, 
left, left the house, never came back for another six days, so I left her. Yeah, I was so heartbroken. I don't know. I was got two daughters. It's like, what do you do? <laughs> so yeah, so I ended up my youngest son was young. See, that's uh, one thing about marriage. If you love, if you love a woman, she respects it. If it's not true, well then, then well, it just it, it just is not true, right? I had a hard life. Outlaws in my life. I went downhill. Uh, now I can make it about Jim. <laughs> that wasn't really a nice saying, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> so you know the. Uh, See what the God is God is gonna change people. If uh if he can change you, he can change anybody. <laughs> so when I came to this church, that was a major was so that was a major brought me to this church. It was Jesus brought me into this church. So I kept on coming to this church. I'm the, um, the elder of the board. I'm the board member of the church, trying to change my life around. <coughs> and uh, and I'm just going to keep on working myself. Uh, so if I can if I can change my way to the Lord, man, I got saved. pray over top of top of me and I pray over my family and how they don't talk to me well they don't talk to me I pray over them <laughs> um, uh, yeah like uh, yeah I talk to him talking about my problems they say well you know never mind about the past the past is the past but you said you you told me I changed you never mind about the past. You just follow me. I saved you. He said, if you can keep on coming, going to this church, and you made you made a lot of you made a lot of friends. He said, he said those old friends over there, they 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 they, they are in the back there now. They changed. Oh, they. <coughs> so there's one thing about those people. They ain't keep on coming. You know those people I used to know. I kind of, kind of pushed them away because I don't see them in church. They had to make they they had to make the choice because you go to church, oh, you know, you just do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But you know, I do love I do love the people in the church. <laughs> See, one thing about the church is that when you walk into the church, this is kind of like family. Because <laughs> when, when you go to heaven, well, you're going to meet a whole, a whole, whole rack of people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so I'm, 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 I'm always happy. Let's have a good hand for Rob. Uh, I guess I'm stealing Eileen's time by saying this, but, you know, isn't that testimony of his just exactly what should happen to everybody? That you just come, and even if you struggle, you keep on coming, and you keep on trying, 
and it keeps getting better and gets better. You get free, free from the addictions or free from problems in your life or health problems or whatever, and your life just gets better and better. And as he said, you know, he's been helping. We, he was at a meeting this afternoon, you know, with leaders of this church, and he was contributing his share. That's a long ways from being a drunk, getting in fights. He said he wasn't a very nice drunk, so I'm guessing he had one or two fights. So that is very, very, very encouraging. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Rob. We love you, Lord. We love you, uh, Rob, with the love of God. And you know that you are our family. And we are so blessed to have you in this church. You are the one who blessed this church, not us. So good evening again. I, I think Rob will the next preacher. Right? Right, Rob? Amen. So what is our topic, topic for tonight? I think our topic for tonight is Sunday night church. Yeah, it's about Sunday night church. And our topic is about vices. Vices. Sa Tagalog, I'm gonna do it in some of our words will be translated in Tagalog. Sa Tagalog, it means bisyo. Vices. We have our spiritual vices and physical vices. Right? Whether we like it or not, we have that in our lives. And sometimes we're trying to deny it because we love to deny our sins. Sometimes our vices, we keep into ourselves and we're trying to wear our mask because we're trying to hide our real you. And most of us, we're hiding it because that is the most comfortable place that we have. So what is vices? It means immoral or wicked behavior. Immoral or wicked behavior. In 1 John 2.16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, isn't the father, but it but is the world. The last of the eyes. I think most of the women are here tonight. Can we see the women in the house tonight? Okay. Most of the women, we all we are always passionate of the things that surround us. We love shopping, right, Marge? We love shopping, right, Heather, Jessica? We love it. But sometimes we do it because we want it, not we need it. Want is different from needs. If we want it, because that is the last of your eyes. If we need it, your soul needs it. So how to overcome vices? How to overcome it? Because I think most of us, we thought that vices just refer from smoking, drinking. But I think that is not really the real vices that we need to overcome or we need to deliver it tonight. How to overcome vices? We all have habits, both good and bad. Anything you do automatically without consciously thinking about it or without specifically deciding to do it, it is a habit. If you're going to do it just like, oh, I do it because I used to it. I want to go to my job just like my job is 9 o'clock. I can go there at 9.30 because you use with it, because you've been using it every day. If the habits are bad or destructive and you find them impossible to change, they are known vices. If that thing is not really helpful to you, if you think that that thing will really affect yourselves or even your family, 
that is a bad habit or destructive and that is feasible to change with you. That is a vices or that a vice or that is a bisyo kung sa Tagalog. In Jeremiah 25.5 saying, Return now everyone from his evil way and from the evil of your doings and dwell in the land that Yahweh has given to you and to your fathers from of old and even forevermore. Even God is telling us, return from evil ways. Return from evil ways. Because we live most of the time in the world, not in the word. Sometimes it's just only one letter that it makes your life miserable. World and word. What is the missing letter in the word? It's letter L. Sometimes, if you are in the church, you are filled with the word of God. And you just come, come up to the realization that, oh God, forgive me. And you humble down yourselves. Because you feel that when you are in the church, you feel more secure. But the real battle is when you are outside of this church. How you handle the vices of your life. How you handle the enemy is the enemy is trying to attack you. How you handle it? Because the real world is outside of this church. The real world is outside of your family. The real world is outside of yourself. And that's the real thing that we need to focus. The chains of bad habits are too weak to be filled until they are too strong to be broken. So it's just like a callus on your feet, right? Or in your hand. If you, just like me, I am uh, working in Jubilee Home. Just same with Marge. We, I work as a housekeeper. So every day, my life begins with map and my cart. So for six years of being a housekeeper, I have some callus on my hand because I use it every day. Every day. I think sometimes I spend more time with my maps compared with my husband. <laughs> Is my husband here? Oh, yeah, he's there. I think I spend more time and just like the vices too, if you spend more time on that thing, on that evil thing, or in that worldly thing, it will be part of your life. It will be just like, oh, I think I am nothing without that thing because you used to it. How many times have you tried to quit a bad habit but found yourself almost powerless to get rid of it or stop doing it? How many times, even me, I have some bad habit, especially when it comes to cell phone, which I'm still praying for God to take away from, from the thing. Or even for us, sometimes we just like having a habit that when it comes to have a sale in Walmart or in superstore, even we don't need it, you need to have a panic buying. Especially Filipino with the rice thing. If one Filipino said, oh, they have some sale in Superstore, in co-op. There's a big sale for rice. Me and my husband will go the right away, get three sacks of rice. Four sacks of rice. Because that's the thing. We cannot stop it. How many times have we tried to quit that? These things is not really important for us. We are all weak and very human and subject to many different problems which can turn into bad habits and vices. We are so weak. Are we weak? Especially when the world is telling you, do it. Anyway, it's only you. Nobody can see you around. Do it. And then here you are, you are weak, and then what the enemy is trying to offer you, you give it because you thought 
It's only by yourself. And you'll never know there is something up there is looking at you. And sometimes it's easy for us to commit sin than to commit the right thing. Did you notice if you're doing wrong decision in life, it's so easy to do it. But if you're doing good things, you have the time to, oh, do I need to go to church? Oh, it's so cold. It's minus 35. God will understand if I don't go to church tonight. Right? But even if it's 45 degrees, if friends or some of the friends is just telling you, oh, we have a party tonight. Can you come? Can you come? We have a party tonight. Even if it's negative 50, yeah, okay, I'll come. Because sometimes <laughs> we are so weak and very human to say no with the world. Because we don't want to hurt people. But the number one thing we always do, we hurt our God. And you are not really just like, oh, anyway, there's next Sunday again, so it's okay. But you'll never know that the revelation of God is this Sunday and not next Sunday. So God speaks to us every time. What most people do not realize is that vice or the bad habit is difficult to remove. In 1 Corinthians 6.19, Or don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in spirit, which are God's. So God is using us as the vessel of his word. We always pray, Lord, let your, sh let your uh, face shine on me tonight. So how God can enter into our lives if our heart is full of garbages. Garbage of our heart is a form of vices. If we, don't not, if we don't know how to release everything in our lives, we are nothing. Whether we like it or not, without God, we are nothing. He is our strength. He is our rock. And we don't have to waste the salvation that God imparts us. The blood of Jesus that shed on the cross. There are examples of vices that try to destroy us through them. Such as, example of vices, gluttony, alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes, gambling, and sexual prohibitions. These are some of the most obvious vices, but what many people do not realize is that things like hatred, Guilt, bitterness, worry, pride, jealousy, self-righteousness, fear, lying, and deception are also bad habits and vices. So we thought just like alcohol, drugs are just like the vices that we know. That we never know that the spiritual vices that we have, like hatred, guilt, Bitterness, worry of, of life, pride of life, joy, jealousy, self-righteousness, fear, lying, and deception are also bad habits and vices. Number one, the problem now that we have to face is the, alcohol, the alcoholism. And this is really normal. And with these vices, there are lots of families was broken because of these vices. Alcoholism is a vice that caused continuous trouble to mankind for millenniums. And though drinking wine in moderation was very common in the Bible times, the Bible has much to say against the constant abuse of overindulge in wine and other alcohol. In Proverbs 21, wine causes mocking and beer, just like strong drink causes fight. 
everyone led astray by them lacks of wisdom. So did we notice that if we are, our mind is invaded with the alcohol, we are not in the right thinking. We can hurt people. We can hurt, our we can hurt ourselves. We can hurt our wives. We can hurt our husband. We can hurt our children. And after that, divorce. Because it started with just like a little bit of wine, a little bit of smoke, a little bit of alcohol. And then it becomes vices. The nicotine and tar or tobacco residue in tobacco is very bad for our health and has been proven to be a major cause of cancer. Even most smokers recognize that smoking is a vice and a bad habit, but the point is how can they stop? Sometimes you really want to feel that you want to stop. But if you're trying to stop it by yourselves, my brothers and my sisters, you can't do it. You can't do it. Only God can do it to yourself. Unless do you have a complete deliverance within your heart. You will stop today. And then tomorrow you skip. And then next day you go again. And then next day you stop. That's a constant habit. But all of us really want to get out from that, just like a bad dreams in your lives. They want, God, please help me. But the first step is to start in you. God can change you if you know how to change yourself and your heart first and how you think about it. Drugs are also very addicting and very harmful. This includes not only the illegal drugs, but also the legal prescri prescribed drugs that millions of people buy across the, the pharmacy counter. Not only the illegal drugs, but most of us. Sometimes we can't sleep. Instead of praying, we will go to the doctor or we'll go to the pharmacy and ask, can you give me something to take because I can't really sleep at night? Instead of praying, we seek for the doctor advice first. But did we examine ourselves first? What is missing in me? Why I can sleep at night? Why my mind is so disturbed? Why my life is so miserable? And then drugs and alcohol and and just like cigarettes, is just part of your lives instead of throwing it away and put God as the center of your life. Gambling. Gambling is also one of the worst vice. And I know I have lots of family that they have separated by their with their wives and family and children because of this. Gambling. Gambling is a vice as addicting as alcoholism or drug and is clearly a case of deceptive evil spirits compelling someone to gamble their hard-earned savings away at the toes of the dice, the turn of a wheel, and the speed of the horse or a chance good hand of a card. The principle behind gambling is that you can make easy money without labor just like the opposite of the values of diligence, hard work, and truth. So we go, we have that thing, right? And now we work, 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 work. And then we said that Saturday and Sunday will be a rest day. So you have your money that you've been working that for two weeks, and then suddenly, oh, maybe I can go there and then find my luck. And maybe this money, it will gonna double. And then at first, most of the people that I talk going to casino, they said that they have fun because first timer have always the first luck. I think that's really the evil wants to deceive that thing, right? Okay. 
Okay, you win tonight. You win the next week, and you win the next week, and then the next day, the next time you go there, your money is all gone. And then you find some things again. Okay, I'm going to work again. Maybe I'm going to get that 1,000 that I've lost last week. Then I try to do this 1,000 again. So many Christians who self-righteously condemn others who are caught up in the obvious vices of alcoholism, drugs, or sexual provision think nothing of overeating and obesity. Gluttony. Gluttony. Those people, Filipino who love rice. Filipino love to eat carbohydrates. We will die without rice. Promise, I'm telling you. I tried to do that one time. I'm working, and I'm just like, maybe I'll try to eat just salad. So I skipped that rice on that um, day. So I just eat salad on my lunchtime. And then at the middle of my shift, I, I see just like stars everywhere. And I told my coworker, I think I feel dizzy. I said, are you feeling well? I don't know, but I feel just like I'm sweating. And then my eyes just, I saw all the stars. And I said, I think there's something wrong in me. And she said, yeah, I eat just only salad. Why? I try to have a good diet, right? Because I'm younger and younger, so I need to have a good diet. But I think it, it doesn't really work well because I'm, al I, I'm almost faint that day. I feel so bad. So I said to myself, eating rice is not bad, but eating moderately is that the right thing to do. Instead of three cups, I can eat only one cup. Right? Right, Heather? Because I know Jessica's son really loves rice and soy sauce. So every time we have an occasion down there, his son will gonna go to my husband in the kitchen. Lorenzo, can I have rice and black soy sauce? Yeah, so that's why I said to myself and even to my son, there's nothing wrong of the food. Remember that what you eat is what you get. So he said, Mom, if, I, if I'm going to eat pork, I will be a pig. That's what you said. If you eat dried fish, you, you will become a fish. That's what you said. So that's what you said. What you eat is what you get. Same with our spiritual lives. If we eat the word of God, not the world, we're going to get spiritually healthy. And if we are spiritually healthy, we'll be physically, physically healthy. Just like Vernon. I always make fun with Vernon. Vernon, I'm sorry. When Vernon came in this church, I remember Vernon, when he came this first, Hi, brother. What's your name? I am Vernon, but Vernon walked like this. You need a seat, and then we just, and that, his favorite seat, I think, rem I remember two to three years ago. That's his favorite seat. And then, now, everybody just got notice it, that Vernon is just live. Dancing, especially if Gord and Dixon and Tony will have the rock and roll. Oh, Vernon just rock and roll for the night, dancing and swaying. And the favorite step is, right, Vern? And I think Vernon is one of our, uh, we can see that, yeah. Forever youth. Because if God is with you, you will be youth. You will be just like grow, uh, growing gracefully in the eyes of God. So in Proverbs 23, 2, put a knife to your own throat if you have a big appetite. I'm not the one who saying this. It's the Bible. Even me, I was scared when I saw it. Put a knife on your throat. <laughs> it means we need to discipline ourselves. Eating is good. 
But for us, we eat three times a day for our rice. And then our snack is rice, our midnight snack is rice. Yeah. We can eat spaghetti is only just like a little bit of snack. Hamburger is a little bit of snack. But rice is life. <laughs> so if our rice is just, we have a container like this. And if our rice is just like this, Lorenzo, oh, we need to get, our rice is so little. We, we, it seems that we need to get the rice from Skaton or Edmonton. He is panicking if our rice is so little. So it's not me that's saying that put a knife to your own throat if you have a big appetite. Because if we know how to love and take care of ourselves, this is ourselves. We are the most beautiful creation from God. So we need to take care of ourselves. In Proverbs 23, tw to 20 to 21, don't associate with the heavy drinkers or dine with the gluttons because drunks and gluttons tend to become poor and drowsiness will clothe them in a rag. Self-righteousness is very closely related to pride. Pride is the root of all sin and was the cause of Satan's downfall. So pride. 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 And, th and I think most of us, it's very, we can deny it that most of us have pride. Especially for me and my husband. I am always in the right side. Okay, my husband said, okay, okay, okay. This argument will stop. Okay, it's my fault. It's my fault. And then stop. See? Because I have lots of pride. And as time goes by, I need to ask God a complete deliverance for that pride. Because as husband and wives, pride must not exist. Pride must be kicked out but because that pride is from the enemy, not from the Lord. In Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, there are some six things that the Lord hates. Seven in fact and detestable sin, arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, and the hand shedding innocent blood, a heart crafting evil plans, feet running swiftly to wickedness, a false witness snorting lies, and someone sowing squirrels between quarrels between brothers. So those are the det detestable things that sometimes we're not aware that we have that in ourselves. Sometimes you said, oh, it's a white lies. You know what is white lies, right? Oh, it's, it is a white lies. But even it is white or green or pink or purple, if it is your favorite, it's yellow, yellow lies, even rainbow lies, it's still a lies. And it is very detestable to the eyes of God. Common, vi common vices that countless millions of people are afflicted with are hatred and bitterness. Like other sins of the mind and of the heart, these are definitely weaknesses brought on by the evil spirit. How can you share the love of God is if your heart is full of hatred and bitterness? How can you say to your brother and sister, I love you with the love of God, if your heart is full of bitterness and hatred? And you can't even forgi forgive yourselves. First, you need to forgive yourselves. If you forgive yourselves, then it's time for you to forget, forgive and forget others. Sometimes you must say that, oh, I forget you, but I cannot forget what you did to me. Do you think that is a complete forgiveness? No. Because complete forgiveness, if you forgive and forget. Ephesians 4.31, let 
all bitterness, wrath, ang anger, outcry, and slander be put away from you with all malice. Take away all the bitterness. Take away all the anger. Take away and replace your heart with the spirit, with the fruit of the spirit, the love, kindness, understanding, joy, peace, sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7, for God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self control. I think the self control is very important to each one of us. Self control, self control. Jealousy and envy also make life hell on earth for others. It is invariably hurts people around us, especially those who say we love the most. Sometimes we love the people. We say, I love you. I love you, my husband. I love you, Lorenzo. But if your wife or if your husband is not around with you, then you just say, oh, why? He is late. Maybe, maybe he met somebody there. You just like making some thoughts on your mind that is the evil is telling you, you see, you see, you love your husband, your husband is late. Where is he right now? Did you know? Maybe he's with somebody. Oh, <laughs> Pastor John one time phoned me. Eileen. Yes, Pastor, what is that? I saw Lorenzo in Superstore. Oh, okay. It's good. Maybe he bought something there. And he is with Jasmine. 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 And I said, ah, okay. And then I remember I got it. That he's just making fun of me. And Lorenzo is buying a Jasmine rice. He is with Jasmine. Did you know that? They hold hands <laughs> with Jasmine. Jasmine, Jasmine. I remember that the brand of the rice that He's buying is jasmine rice. So in Proverbs 6, 34, because jealousy incites strong man's rage, and he will show no mercy when it's time for revenge. So if you have lots of jealousy, then our mind is just like, oh, everything is just like from evil. The evil is the one telling you. Some people have a compulsive bad habits of lying or practicing deception. In Proverbs 12, 5, the thoughts of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. So most of the time, if we have big problems with our, I always make example with my husband. If I'm making example with my husband because I love him so much, if I'm just like, okay, I thoughts of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked, I said, I call Madonna, you know what? My husband is like this. My husband is like this. But I realized that instead of calling a friend or 50-50, call a friend, it's much better that if you have some issues with your husband or wife, it's better to pray, pray together. Pray together. That is our best weapon. But remember, any bad or negative habit, that you have that hurts yourself or other as a vice, it is very impossible that enemy of your soul is behind it, using it to try or to defeat or hinder you. Your devices are your vices. Can we show that picture? You see? Your devices, your phone, your laptop, your devices are your vices. So did you see in the picture, couple, supposed to be, they are praying before they go to bed. But what they are holding in, cell phone. Friends, cell phone. Gathering of family and friends, cell phone. So we forgot that we are in to the world. Because usually, that is the offer of the world. That we really love to take it. Satan Take it, take it, take it. And you just, okay, okay, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. 
we are, out, we are out of control using devices. We are so addicted, even the kids now. We have the challenge on the phone now that most of the kids commit suicide. It really hurt. I saw it in Facebook. The Momo challenge, that is very, that is very, very dangerous. Please, please, keep an eye to your children, especially those children who are addicted on using gadget. Sometimes you don't know. They know how to open the gadgets easily for them. They can go with, di with different games, but you don't know what are the games that they're playing. Sometimes that is not really appropriate for their age. So let's be careful about it. Even born-again Christians who love the Lord are spirit to evil spirit. But of course, if you have some visiting sin, some dark corner of your life or bad habit that you're not willing to yield to the Lord, the enemy can bother you and pluck you on the point. In Ephesians 4.27, and don't give a place or opportunity to the devil. If we keep on praying, that is the best communication that we have to the Lord. If we put ourselves in the presence of the Lord, then we don't have the place for the evil. Our thoughts are covered by the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are covered by the Holy Spirit. But if we keeping away from the word of God, then we will be on the dark side. When you give a place to the enemy in your life, it's like having an evil border in your house. Because your house is your heart. This is the real church, your heart. This is just like a building that we come to worship. But your real church is your heart. You bring this heart everywhere. People see in you. Eyes goes to your heart. We need complete deliverance from deep-seated vices and bad habit. Ask God. We need complete deliverance. God, humble down yourselves to God. God, I cannot do it by myself. Please help me. Help me with my addiction. Help me change my heart, change my mind. This is all about you. I am nothing without you. God is just waiting for us to come to him. If we open our, our heart and if we open our lives to Jesus, it's easy for him to penetrate into our heart. But if we're always closing our hearts to Jesus, then we will be in trouble. We will be in the wrong person. We will be in the wrong place. And we will be in the wrong thoughts. They don't recognize that their problems are spiritual as, as well as a physical. So they don't take spiritual authority over these spirits and rebuke them and get rid of them. Every time the enemy is trying to put negative things on your mind, rebuke it. There's a power in the name of Jesus. All we have to do is call upon his name. I want to get rid of these bad habits of mine. Their vices of mine in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Did you know that if you mention the name of Jesus, the evil is scared. He will just got run away. If you sincerely want to deliverance and pray for a real victory over any bad habit, the Lord will help you. Jesus never, 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 never fails. He always answers when we call upon him with a whole heart, not a part of your heart. It's a whole heart. You cannot say, Jesus, I love you with my half, with my left side of my heart. Because the right side of my heart is for the world. God is asking us the whole heart of yours. Attack and hit the devil back every time he tries his tactics on you. The devil can only win if you surrender. He can never win as long as you keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. In James 4, 7, be subject therefore to God. 
Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Keep praying and asking the Lord to protect and deliver and give you the complete victory. And you claim the quote his word, his word and his will. God's, God's way is the most perfect way that we have to follow. Not our way, but his way. John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. It's nice to feel that you can say, I'm free from any vices because God sets me free. Whatever your bad habit is, Jesus, only Jesus can set you free. Let go. Let go, let go of the vices, of the wicked things that we keep on practicing. Let go and let God. So, all we have to do is to let go everything. Whatever neg negative things that we have in our mind, whatever the word is telling you, you can't change because you will be bad forever. You can never be changed. But God said, in me there is no condemnation. But in world, there will be condemnation. Because only Jesus will set you free. As long you will gonna free from all the things that is not pleasing to the eyes of God. And tonight, whatever vices that you have, Either spiritual vices or spiritual vices. Ask God that he will be free. That you will be free from everything. Because this is not a coincidence why my preaching is for vices, right? We never know. Some of our brothers and sisters are suffering and they keep it from themselves for a long time. And tonight, this is a breakthrough, a big breakthrough, and we need to cut the chain. Cut the chain. The enemy is out from our body. This body belongs to God, and I am the child of God. Amen. Can we call the worship team, please? Uh, can we pray? Our Lord God and Heavenly Father, we adore you, we honor you, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the word, Lord God, that you revealed it to us, Lord God. May your word be stuck into our hearts and into our mind that as we leave this place, we will be set free from all the evil deeds that we have, Lord God. Past and present, Lord God, we need to set us free. Because our future is in you, Jesus. And we're looking forward for the eternal life that we're going to meet you face to face. And we're going to see it, Lord God, to you. That thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. Thank you, Jesus, for your unconditional love. Thank you, Jesus, for you never condemn us. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us another day, Lord God, to celebrate your goodness. Because every day is a new beginning. Every day is a new beginning. God, have a full of mercy to us. All we have to do is open our hearts and surrender everything to God. As what I said, let go and let God. Tonight, God, it's all about your glory. And you are the victorious God. Victorious God. That will never leave us nor forsake us. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, God the Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
Good evening, um, brothers and sisters. I just received a message that one of our sisters in Christ, uh, she is in the hospital right now, one of our Canadian sisters in Christ. And uh, she's asking for any uh, amount that we can help her because I think she is uh, really in need right now. So if God is uh, touching you to give any amount, please uh, feel free to put it on our um, plate in here because after this service, we will go straight to the hospital to visit her. Thank you so much. And if anybody needs a prayer, please uh, feel free to come uh, uh, come, front in, uh, come here and uh, we're going to pray for you. And we can ask Pastor to help us to pray. And uh, we're really honored to have you tonight. Thank you so much. And to the wife. 